Blackbeard, the pirate all pirates feared, captain of the Queen Anne's Revenge, father of Angelica Teach, a sadistic soul driven by greed and his fear of mortality. Blackbeard was a name uttered in terror by all who sail the sea. When many people think of pirates, they think of the infamous Blackbeard, a name uttered in multiple pieces of fiction, including the Pirates of the Caribbean saga, generally being forgotten as a real piece of history. Yes, I'm saying Blackbeard, also known as Edward Teach, was a real historical figure. Now, I'm not personally an expert on real pirate history, so this video will be a very brief history of Blackbeard. Buckle up, because this is a very, very interesting story. Little is known of Blackbeard's early days. All we have to go off of in regards to his early life is entirely speculation, so take this all with a grain of salt. From what little information exists, Edward Teach was born around 1680 in Bristol, England. Many theories exist that Teach was born into a wealthy and prosperous family, as he was known to be very capable of reading and writing, which is a skill only known by those who could afford decent education at the time. It was also theorized that Teach arrived in the American colonies in the final years of the 1600s, in his late teens or early adulthood. According to Captain Charles Johnson, Teach served as a privateer operating from Jamaica in the War of the Spanish Succession. Johnson claimed that Teach had often distinguished himself for his uncommon boldness and personal courage. After the war and the outlawing of privateers, Teach turned to a life of piracy. Around 1610, he joined a crew captained by the renowned pirate captain Benjamin Hornigold. Later that year, Hornigold placed Teach as the captain of another captured sloop, and they went on various missions together raiding, pillaging, plundering, and otherwise pilfering their Weasley black guts out. During one of the raids near Cape Charles, Teach made his first headlines as a pirate as the anti-piracy patrol of North Carolina were warned of Captain Thatch and a sloop of six guns and a crew of 70 men. Later, Teach and Hornigold met with Steed Bonnet, another wealthy man who had recently turned to piracy, and after learning of his crew being dissatisfied with his leadership, Teach was given control of the ship and crew, making a small fleet. Hornigold was a former British privateer, so he only wanted to attack his old enemies, but his crew couldn't stand by while the captain let his old brothers-in-arms sail, with valuable cargo ripe for the taking. So his crew elected to disregard their captain's orders. Eventually, he sailed the sloop The Ranger to Nassau and left the other two sloops with Teach, after hearing word of the king's pardon for rejecting a life of piracy and enlisting as a pirate hunter. The two, unfortunately, never met again. With his two sloops, Teach attacked a French slave ship called La Concorde in 1717, and the ship was captured after a quick broadside attack, which killed several crewmen, prompting the captain to surrender. The remaining crew of La Concorde were given the smaller of Teach's sloops, and many of the slaves were freed on the island Bequia, and some may have joined Teach's crew. Unfortunately, those left on the island were captured again by the former crew of the merchants of La Concorde. Teach immediately made modifications to La Concorde with 40 guns and renaming her to the Queen Anne's Revenge. After taking command of his new ship, he placed Lieutenant Richards in charge of Bonnet's original sloop. By November, Teach engaged in another large merchant ship called the Great Allen near St. Vincent and successfully managed to steal all the cargo and had the ship burned and sunk with the crew being disembarked on shore. The Boston newsletter got a hold of the story, claiming Teach was a commander of a French ship with 32 guns, a 10-gun brigantine, and a sloop of 12 guns. There aren't many sources on how Blackbeard claimed the brigantine, but it's estimated that he ran a fleet consisting of well over 150 men. Through 1717 and early 1718, Blackbeard went to work carving out his legacy, capturing more ships and even blockading Charleston, South Carolina, and by May of 1718, he named himself the Commodore of his fleet. Soon after, Blackbeard established a base of operations on Ocracoke Island off the coast of North Carolina, but eventually had the Queen Anne's Revenge shipwrecked, where he escaped to one of his sloops soon after. Alexander Spotswood, the governor of Virginia, was fearful of attacks from Blackbeard due to the colony having a substantial population and busy seaports, so he breached the sovereignty of North Carolina and sent Robert Maynard to deal with the potential pirate threat. Maynard hid his men below deck on their ship, tricking Blackbeard into thinking they were lightly crewed, but on command the crew revealed themselves to the main deck after Blackbeard sent his men aboard, springing the trap on the unwitting pirates. After a skirmish lasting only six minutes, 
Blackbeard had fallen in battle against Maynard, having multiple gunshot wounds and cuts from swords all over his body. His head was cleaved from his body and hung at the front of the British vessel, cementing the end of Blackbeard's reign of terror. But was it really that terrifying? For one, it's not known for sure if he ever killed anyone. Sure, his endeavors have killed people, but he's never killed anybody directly. Modern media shows him as a ruthless tyrant who kills anybody in his path, but in reality, he was more than happy to leave the men he captured unharmed. After all, why would you kill merchant sailors when you need to continuously steal from them to survive? Plus, how much of his legacy was crafted through the fear that his prisoners experienced? He may never have killed anyone, but somebody who thinks they narrowly survived an encounter with him might spread the word that he was a ruthless monster, which would eventually become part of the mythos surrounding him. There are accounts that he tied cannon fuses into his beard and lit them before battle to make his head appear to be surrounded by smoke and ash, making him look more demonic and insane. He always carried multiple guns strapped to his chest, and he was apparently a tall man with dark, sunken eyes. This would easily scare superstitious sailors. We just don't know enough about the guy to make any strong claims as to his moral standing. All we know is that he was against the norm of his time. He was an extravagant man who wanted to instill fear into the hearts of his enemies, and that he created a legend far bigger than just his own. These days, the name Blackbeard is synonymous with piracy, and fictional depictions of him have become tied into the original myths. Some believe he had voodoo powers, or that he had a greatly exaggerated West Country English accent, or that he buried treasure somewhere off the American coast, or that his ghost haunts the shores of North Carolina. And even for somebody who wasn't particularly successful monetarily, nor had even that long of a career, he truly made his mark on history. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below. What fact about Blackbeard do you find the craziest? Which is your favorite fictional depiction of the legendary outlaw? Let's get a discussion going. Also, I have a merch store with some brand new items tailor-made for the summer season. Everything from notebooks to shoes to hats to t-shirts. A link will be in the description and pinned comment below. Also, I have a Patreon page. For only $5 a month, you can have your name listed in the credits at the end of each of my videos. And lastly, join my Discord server if you want to chat with me one-on-one -on -one about various piratey topics. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.